Good morning everyone, here from a new country for us. We're in Peru, in South America, and we're starting off in the capital called Lima. Right now we're in the district that we're staying in called Miraflores, one of the popular districts to stay in. It's supposed to be a kind of upscale residential shopping area. I think this is our fourth country in South America now. Yes, it is. Uh, we've been to Brazil, obviously, Argentina, and Colombia for just a little bit, and now we're here. Yeah, Colombia was only a day, so... Only a day, well, we saw a bit of the, the capital. Yeah, so right now we're just heading to a store to get a SIM card for Carol, and we're also gonna swap some money, exchange some money. Noisy birds. <laughs> and we are here in the very beginning of spring, uh, it's uh, the beginning of October, and the, the weather is very good for me. We were uh, struggling in Rio because it was extremely hot. But here I think it's like 21 degrees Celsius, so it's really, really cool. Yeah, when we left Rio it was above 30 degrees. I think here is further up north as well, so I didn't realize it would be so cold around here. But you can see people in their jackets and hoodies and stuff. For me it's nice though, in a t-shirt. We ended up finding the Claro store for the SIM card but there were queues inside and it looked like it was going to take about an hour so we're just going to do it at another time. I think this is one of the main avenues here, big road, there's loads of businesses and stores everywhere. So we were able to exchange the money. We exchanged about $500 and I think it was only like a $2 difference overall from the official rate. Obviously the place is gonna take a bit of commission, so that's not so bad. And right now we're in some sort of main square, Palacio de las Artes. I think it's like a museum. Also got a colonial style church there. It's been a while since we've seen the Spanish colonial style churches. Yes, yeah, you're right. I remember the Philippines, but after that, I don't think so. I think that was it. That was it, a long time ago, yeah, actually. Yeah, a long, long time ago. And around here, there's some nice parks. I think there's like some sort of flower event going on because of these flowers scattered around. Yeah, so it does look like some sort of event. Number one. That was the winner, I guess. Yeah, so Carol just checked and it's an international flower fair. We didn't even know this was going on. Yeah, we're lucky. Yeah, good day to come. <laughs> yeah, so I think I've already seen a million kind of plants that I've never seen before. <laughs> Unusual ones. Feels like a weekend because of this event. Yeah, it's very packed, but it's only like, uh, today's Thursday, I think. Yeah, I think it's Thursday. Before we continue with our day, we're going to talk about the sponsor of this video, Surfshark, which is our recommended VPN provider that we've been using for almost three years now. If you are a digital nomad or a traveler like us, you know how risky it can be to frequently connect to public Wi-Fi. However, Surfshark allows us to have a private connection, keeping our personal information and sensitive data safe from potential hackers. Surfshark also allows us to avoid online restrictions when visiting internet-restricted places. For example, when we traveled to Turkey last year, we could only access some online booking platforms by using a VPN, so Surfshark saved us a lot of headaches when booking accommodations. 
Besides that, Surfshark also gives you access to all Netflix libraries. Depending on the country that we are, we have access to limited series and films on Netflix, but with Surfshark we can set our devices to a different location and that way we can watch any series or films that we want. With just one single account you can connect to unlimited devices, which means you can use it to keep your entire family safe online too. Click on the link in the video description which has the discount code Jumping Places to get 3 months for free and that also includes a 30 day money back guarantee policy. And next to the flower park we have the cat park. So I think I read about this place online that it was a park where they feed all the cats. Can't see that many right now but they're, they're all knocked out around here. Especially this guy. Yeah so it seems to be some kind of project to feed the stray cats. Got a little house here, some food. So we've come to the awesome coast now pretty close to where we're staying. If you search online for photos of Lima you'll always see this coastline and there's pretty much a walkway all the way along. Hey check that out Carol. Oh, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think is that the motorized one? No. No? I don't think so. No. Oh yeah I don't think it does have a motor. It's also cool that you have this like big coastal highway road. A bit like California. Yeah, the Malibu area and also a bit like uh, Liban Lebanon and Beirut but still very unique because the rocks are yeah, just crazy like you can see that we are very high but like just over there is the ocean you remember when we did it in Turkey yeah it was very very cool but we were not so close to the like rock like this yeah it's coming back oh my god so cool yeah it just Flying around, So it's definitely worth it to walk along this walkway at the top of the cliffs. There's lots of little park areas where you can hang out. Also some nice cafes too, with some great views. Lots of surfers here. Loads of surfers actually, only just realized. Hundreds of them. Looks like there's good waves today. So this is one of the most famous parks on the coast, Parque del Amor the love park but all these nice mosaics everywhere around here it goes around the entire park the outskirts and we just noticed that this is actually where they're all taking off from we just saw a guy taking off from here So this is a good spot to check out the surfers. So there's actually loads of surf schools here. I did read online that that's one of the popular things to do in Lima, do some surf lessons.
So it is the next day now and we've come to a pyramid that's close to where we're staying. It was only like a eight minute Uber ride and it cost 15 solis per person to come here. And you gotta have a mandatory guide. It's supposed to take about an hour, the tour. I think it's starting now actually. Starting now. Yeah, so let's check it out. Welcome to Capuchana. My name is Milagros. In this case, I am going to be your tour guide. This temple, Huacapoquiana, was divided into parts. This is the low part, and this was the administrative area. And, be, and behind you, you see the pyramid. And that is the religious or ceremonial area. So this pyramid, Huacapoquiana, was created by a society called the Lima Culture that were around this region from 200 AD to 700 AD. They don't know much about the people yet, but they know that they were the ones that created this. Kind of interesting compared to the other pyramids that we've seen throughout the world, because usually it's like big blocks, isn't it? Yeah, but she said that they used like a bookshelf technique, which is basically what you see. It looks like books on a library or something, and that's because they wanted to prevent like issues with the earthquakes because this area has a lot of earthquakes so yeah I, I think it helped uh, to keep it like this until today yeah to preserve it time of the Lima culture it would have been a lot bigger from what the guide said but now yeah there's a city on top of it so I did read online that there's probably more artifacts beneath these buildings but yeah they can't really get to them you have to destroy the buildings and the modern buildings have we ever been to a pyramid that's like literally in the middle of a no. city like this I think that's the shocking part <laughs> when we found about this place we were like what? <laughs> right in the middle of the, the chaos and the, the city, big city. So the pyramids, like many pyramids, were built for religious purposes, mainly for uh, sacrifices. Apparently they found bodies of women down here. And they said because they believed that it would make the place more fertile, right? Yes, because I think uh, here in this region doesn't get a lot of rain, so they thought if they uh, sacrifice the women since the women are the fertile person so they thought it, the, the rain would come yeah and in some other areas they would find places where they make offerings with like fish different things like that because they thought that the gods would provide them more fish more food not easy to be a woman <laughs> yeah not at those never times works, right you get sacrificed to make it rain I just told us that after the Lima culture came another culture called the Wari culture which was an empire in the region and they used this part as a cemetery and here's an example of what the tombs were like when they found it I think they found mainly uh, babies and kids that they would sacrifice at the time so that's the bonus we already get to see the llamas and alpacas I thought we'd only be seeing those in Cusco. Yeah, there's just one alpaca, but... Over there, right? Yeah, the brown one. The brown one, and the other ones are llamas. Yeah, I've never seen these in person before. Check this guy. Munching away. Oh. <laughs> Was that a sneeze? Yeah, there's the alpaca. So 
here's an example of the different things that they could have planted back then. Pretty whole, which I guess is beans. They also had the cactuses here. And she mentioned that one of them is like a psychedelic cactus. I think it's the San Pedro one. Which is kind of getting popular now in modern times. Yeah, so it's a cool place to come. I thought we were just seeing the pyramid. I didn't know that they'd be showing like the agriculture and the animals. A lot. I'm not sure what that is. Looks like some sort of bean too. I guess it's like a, a green bean. Now come to the historic center of Lima, one of the main places to visit. And we're visiting the main square called Plaza Mayor. Translates to the big square, I guess. And this is where the city of Lima was founded by the Spanish in 1535. Some really impressive buildings here. So you have like cathedrals, some government buildings. I think that's the government palace over there. I like these yellow buildings. Yeah, everything is really, really beautiful. And I like this uh, thing that's coming out of the... Kind of like a balcony. Like a balcony, yeah. Wooden one. And the good thing about Lima so far that we've seen is that everything is very clean. And it's not very chaotic. I mean, it's a big city, but it's not like Rio. Uh, we had a bit of traffic right now to come here, but it's, it wasn't as bad as some other places that we go. And it's very clean. So I think we're going to visit the cathedral, Catedral de Lima. See people entering it. Looks like a massive one. So it's 30 soles per person to enter the cathedral. You've got to have a guided tour. So we're joining this Spanish tour here. <laughs> Turns out that this cathedral actually has tombs underground. You're not allowed to go down, but you can see the remains of people. It says that there's 70 people, men and women, buried beneath. Yeah, so this place is definitely massive. It's pretty cool because you have the main cathedral area, but then you have these other rooms here that are like art galleries, loads of old art pieces. This one's from 1758 and it actually shows the cathedral there damaged from an earthquake at the time. Walking streets around the main square are also really nice, nice and peaceful. Loads of nice buildings everywhere. Like Carol said before, there's lots of these buildings with the enclosed balconies, which is kind of different. I don't think we see that in the other Spanish colonial places no, that we've been. It's very different. Uh, we've seen that kind of thing in the like Ottoman Empire, Empire places. places, Turkey. Yeah, like Turkey or Greece, but not not in around here. And also the colors uh, are more like pastel, pastel colors. Less vibrant. Less vibrant, but really, really cute. We ended up coming into a park called Parque La Muralla. Muralla means wall, I think. You can see like an old, ancient looking 
wall. In the distance, there's like some sort of neighborhood there, a super colorful one. I think I saw online that you can go to that point there. It's one of the highest viewpoints of Lima. I think that's the place. I remember those colorful buildings. We didn't even know this place was there though. We are just wandering around. Got some old looking cannons too. Maybe it was like a, a fort or something. The old city was fortified, I guess. to a restaurant right on the main square you can see the cathedral that we went to before it'll be a bit more expensive because we're right in the touristy place Maison del Inca and we're gonna try some traditional Peruvian food yeah very excited for that so first we're gonna try some Peruvian drinks hey get lost anyway where were we? we're gonna try the Peruvian drinks what what's yours called pisco sour famous alcoholic drink with, made with pisco and I got this called Inca Cola get lost Inca Cola I thought it was like a coca-cola but from that color it's nothing like that apparently this was invented by British immigrants in 1935 it is sour but it's good I like the alcohol it's almost like the cachaça the, the alcohol the liquor like very strong yeah, it's strong, but very good. I like it. Almost looks like olive oil, the color. It's the same color. <laughs> Unusual taste, like a new taste. Really? I think this is one of the most famous drinks in Peru. Like number one soda. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad, but I can't really compare it to anything because it's like just a unique taste. Is it like lime taste? No, not really. No? Just a weird artificial kind of taste. So all the food has arrived. There's an event going on behind us, so it's a bit loud right now. I got a dish called Lomo Saltado, which is kind of like a Chinese stir fry, because there were a lot of Chinese immigrants here. The majority of them arrived in the 19th century. So yeah, the Peruvians got a bit of a mix of their food. So I got the famous ceviche, which is uh, like fish marinated in lime. And it's a very famous dish here in Peru. And I've always loved it. I've tried in other countries in South America and I loved it. And we also got another dish for a starter. And this one is called causa. And it's like a potato casserole, but with fish. And I got like a ceviche, ceviche causa. causa and it also comes with the corn, corns here, like big corns. Huge corns. Yeah, I think it's called chocolo here. Chocolo. Yeah. All right, I'll try my dish first. We didn't mention, but Lima is considered to be the food capital of South America. It often wins that award, so it must be good. Some sauce in there. Looks like soy sauce. Yeah, I think it is. It just tastes like a Chinese dish. Yeah, like identical to Chinese. I love Chinese, so that's good. And then the other things is just like a normal South American taste. The rice isn't like a Chinese taste. It just tastes like, yeah, South American rice, kind of plain. Nice though. Are right, you gonna try that one? Yeah, the, the causa. Causa. It's good. Very good. Like uh, like ceviche with potato, with like smashed potato. Oh, is that what the yellow thing is? Yeah. Smashed potato. Mm -hmm. But it has a very good taste. Some spices maybe. It's a bit spicy. I don't think I've ever seen corn like that though. No big ones. I want to get one too. <laughs> yeah, big juicy corn. And I guess the main ceviche dish probably just tastes the same, right? Just without the potato mix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really like it. And I think they always put the sweet potato to mix the taste because the ceviche is very strong. So when you eat both together, it's like really, really good. This is definitely more expensive though than your typical dishes that you can get around here. For example, yesterday we ate for just 13 solis, like a, a big meal. 
and that filled us up. We saw places around here that were like 10 or 11 solis, so yeah, I think that's around $3. One of the famous desserts here, picarones, frying. Let's see how the Peruvian donut is. On the paper, it said it's made from sweet potato, pumpkin, and some honey on top. Sounds tasty. It is tasty. It's just like donut, but like softer not like the the strong dough can the you dough. tell the sweet potato and, yeah, and pumpkin the, in yeah. there no sweet potato i think the dough is made from it looks like it tastes like it it's really good <laughs> yeah i'll try it out oh yeah it's, it's real soft mm -hmm. yeah i think they have this at breakfast sometimes so i'm hoping we're gonna have a hotel that gives us this for breakfast <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we got it right next to the main square they have these little food stalls selling all sorts really cool building here too la casa de la gastronomia peruana So that's gonna be it here from Lima. We're just in the hotel room that we've been staying at. It's $45 a night. We've been here three nights overall, and that includes breakfast. It's called Casa Porta. It's pretty nice as well, even outside the decorations around the hotel. It's lots of nice areas to sit around, hang out. So that's pretty good. And in the next video, we're gonna be in Cusco. We're actually gonna be heading to the airport soon. And yeah, all the rest of the videos are going to be from that region. We're going to be doing some treks around there and also checking out Cusco. So really looking forward to that. That's the main reason that we've come to Peru. If you like this video, just drop a like as usual to support us. Subscribe to see more videos like this. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and we'll see you in the next one.